Hey guys, let's take a look at radicals first off today. Um, first off, let's look at some actual numbers and then kind of just get it in our heads that a lot of algebra rules and you know theorems and so on, they base it off of actual numbers. If somebody at some point in the past went, you know, hey, look at, look at what happens with these numbers. It works every time. So let's just make an algebraic you know, theorem out of it or a law or whatever you want to call it. So let's do the first one here, for example. And what is the square root of nine times the square root of four? Well, the square root of nine is three. The square root of four is two. Well, the answer is six. Well, okay, let's do another one. What's the square root of 16 times the square root of 25? Well, the answer to that is square root of 16, four. Square root of 25, five. Four times five is 20. All right, well, somebody at some point went, wait a minute, look at this. Nine times four is 36, and the square root of 36 is also six. Huh, and somebody went, look, 16 times 25 is 400, and the square root of 400 is actually 20. Hey, wait a minute, this works every time I try it. Whenever you multiply two numbers like this under a radical, it's the same thing as just having them both as a product under one radical. So, and if it's true for the square root of 36, you can also break it down into two different factors as well, which we'll do in just a minute. So this is the theorem. You don't have to write this down if you don't want to, but that's what it is. The square root of m times the square root of n is the square root of mn as you know a product underneath the radical. So let's look at two ways of finding the answer to these things. The first way is you can find squares as factors, or you can use a factor tree, whichever way you want to. You might recognize um, one first. Let's do the first one here, the square root of 18. All right, now you might recognize, well, oh wait, 18, that's uh, the square root of six times the square root of three, and that's great, but that doesn't really help us all because what's the square root of six? What's the square root of three? We don't really have an answer for those, it's an integer. But if you break it down like this instead and go, oh, wait a minute, that's the square root of nine times the square root of two, you could look at this and go, wait, the square root of nine, that's three. So I can just write three times the square root of two, and that's the answer, okay? All right, the square root of 32, same thing. You might look at this and go, oh, that's the square root of four times the square root of eight. That's good as far as it goes, but then you have square root of eight, what do you do with that? One way to do this that's completely foolproof, unless you see two factors immediately, is you can take, let's say, 32 and use a factor tree. And you can go, all right, I'm factoring this down to all prime factors. So that's gonna be two and 16. And 16 is two and eight, and eight is two, and that's four, and four is two, and then there's two. Really what you have then, as the square root of 32, is this. One, two, three, four, five. That's two times two times two times two times two, all in the radical. Each pair, you pull out and count it as the square root. So in other words, two times two is four. The square root of four is two, done. Another pair, two times two, well that's four, the square root of four, is also two, so you multiply those two, all right? So outside the radical, you have two times two, and under the radical, the only thing left is the square root of, root of two, and you're done, and that's the answer, okay? You might have also seen that 32 is the same thing as the square root of 16 times two. You might have looked at that and said, wait a minute, the square root of 16, well, that's four. And then four square root of two, four square root of two, same thing. Okay, 200. You might want to do the factor tree and knock this down to all prime numbers and then pull out this, the uh, you know the pairs. Or you might look at this and go, oh wait, I recognize that. That's just going to be 100 times 2. Right, you can go, oh, the square root of 100? Well, that just turns into 10 on the outside. So we just have 10 on the outside, square root 2 left, and the inside. There's our answer. 72, you might recognize this as 8 times 9. If you do, great, go ahead. You can do nine and then times eight. You might go, okay, the square root of nine, ooh, that's three. I put that outside. I just have an eight left. Well, eight, you can break down into four times two, right? So you can look at this and go, oh, I have a four. The square root of that is two. So I'll do two times three. That's gone now. And my outside number is two times three. Underneath the radical is a square root of two. And there's my final answer. And again, if you had done 72 like this and gone to all these different things, you would have got this. 
you would have had 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, like this, if you had done the factor tree. That said, you would take this, the square root of 9 is 3, gone. The square root of 4 is 2, gone. And then just add a 2 under the radical. This is 6, square root of 2, just like it is right there. Boom, you got it. Okay. All right. Well, let's, this is a piece of cake once you figure out uh, how to knock these down and to simplify them first. A lot of these that look completely different, I mean, what you're doing is trying to make these look like like terms and then mash them together to simplify. But 50 and 200 obviously aren't like terms. This is like saying 3a minus 5y or whatever. But you can break down 50 and break down 200 and then get yourself to a point where you can add these together like, like terms. So let's do 50. That's probably pretty simple. You can probably see that's 25 times 2. And this one, the 5 and the square root of 200, we did that one a minute ago. That's going to be 100 times 2. All right? So the square root of 25 is 5. That gets multiplied by 3. That gives me 15. The only thing left underneath the radical is a 2. Minus, now let's take it at 100. The square root of 100 is 10. 5 times 10 is 50 times the square root of 2. All right? So we have 15 of something minus 50 of something. Well, that's going to give us negative 35 of the something, and that is our final answer, simplify. Okay? Here's another one. We have uh, this times this times this, all of these with radicals. Quick question for you. If I were to tell you this, what is 3a times 4b times 2c? You'd have no problem at all doing that, would you? 3 times 4 is 12, times 2 is 24, a times b times c is just abc. Well, that's exactly what you're doing here. You're multiplying the outside numbers first. Then, under a radical, you're going to multiply all three of these uh, together. So 3 times 4 times 2 will be 24 on the outside. The radical will be 2 times 12, which is... Well, let's, let's do this. Let's do 2 times 3, which is 6. 6 times 12 is 72. All right? And again, if you didn't recognize right away, you might recognize, wait a minute, that's 36 times 2. But I doubt it. But if you did, great. You can take this out and go, okay, that's going to be 24. I have it already. The square root of 36 is 6. So 24 times 6, then square root of 2 under the radical. If you didn't, you would knock down the factor tree here. That's going to be 8 times 9, and then 2 times 4, and then 2 times 2, and then 9, of course, is 3 times 3. So you have 24 then, then you have uh, 2, 2, 2, 3, and 3. This set of 3's goes out here and becomes just 1, 3, right? The square root of 9 is 3. This set of 2's, the square root of 4 is also uh, pulled out, and that's going to be 2. Well, 2 times 3 times 24 happens to be 144. There's your square root of 2. That's simplified. That's all there is to it. All right. You do need, I mean, your arithmetic needs to be good on these. You need to be able to knock down these into you know factors quickly, or look at this and recognize that one of these factors. I mean, this number can be divided into two numbers, one of which of the factors is a perfect square. Then you pull it out and just do the square root. Okay. Here's another one. Pause and copy if you need to. This is just a dis distribution. That's all you're doing. You're distributing this through both of those terms. So we'll do this one first. So four times two is eight. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is just 3, right? All right, done with that one. So we have 4 then times the square root of uh, 3 times the square root of 6 is the square root of 18. Well, this one we know is 24 minus 4 times the square root of 18. Well, we can recognize, we should be able to recognize, that 18 is 9 times 2, and the square root of 9 comes out and becomes 3, right? So we have 24 still, minus 4 times 3 is 12, square root of 2, and that's it. There's nothing else we can do. Don't try to put these together. Oh, this is going to be 12. 24 minus 12, and no, you can't. This is like saying, you know, you can, these are not like terms, uh, so you can't do anything any more with them. No more simplifying is possible. So that's all you need to do. All right? Okay, the second half is we're going to graph a little bit. So graph a, uh, get a piece of graph paper, pause if you need to, and go ahead and graph both of these lines on the same coordinate plane. So graph y equals 1 half x minus 2, then graph y equals 1 half x plus 3. So go ahead and pause it and then do that. Okay, well the first one, the uh, y-intercept is negative 2. 
The slope is one half, it's positive, so up one and then over two, up one, over two, and then, you know, connect the uh, line of the dots, there you go. The second one, the y-intercept is positive three, one, two, three, and then the, the slope is one half, so one up and then two over, one up and then two over, and then you see what happens, right? Now, those lines are parallel, okay? And the reason they are parallel is that they have something in common. So what do they have in common? The slope, right? If you have two lines that have the same slope, they will be parallel. We'll deal with perpendicular later, but that's all you need to know for this lesson is that if two lines have the same slope, they will be parallel lines. Now let's look at something old. Remember how to do these? Find the equation of a line that has a slope of blah, blah, and passes through, you know, so on. Okay, again, I hope you remember the very first step you should do to help you get going. Because I know this is one of those kind of problems that people always go, oh, how do I start this? The way you start is you don't even think. You just write y equals mx plus b. And you need to fill in this blank, which is the slope, and this blank, which is the y-intercept. Okay, well, they tell you the slope. Look at there. So we got half of this already. The slope is 3 fourths. So it's y equals 3 fourths x plus b. Now we need to find the b. The way we find the b is to find out a number for x and a number for y. Then we have all numbers and a b. We can just solve for b, right? Well, we have an x and a y. There's your x and there's a y. They might give you a couple of uh, points. You can use either one of them if they do. All right, let's just stick it in there. y is 3. Uh, 3 fourths times x is the same thing as 3 fourths times 5, maybe over 1 we can call it, okay? And this is going to be 3 equals 15 over 4 plus b. The 3, let's turn that into a number with the 4 as a denominator, so it'll be 12 over 4. And we'll kind of slop this over here, 12 fourths minus 15 fourths, and that means b is going to be negative 3 fourths, okay? So our equation of the line is y equals 3 fourths x minus 3 fourths. Kind of weird having a slope and a y-intercept that are the, kind of the same fraction. Oh well, one of those things. Okay, well knowing this and reminding yourself that parallel lines have the same, I won't give away the whole thing. You have to connect the dots to realize the answer. If you want to pause it for a few minutes and work on that, you can come back. Okay, you got it. Okay. Parallel lines have the same slope. There we go. All right. So let's do this next. All right. Let's take a look. Find the equation of a line that is parallel to the line and passes through right there. Okay. Well, if it tells you that it's parallel to this line, that means it has the same slope, right? So all we need to do is figure out what's the slope of this line right here. Well, let's figure out y equals blah, blah, x, and so on. So let's go 2y, let's move the negative x over to make it x, and then plus a 2, then divide everything by 2, so we have y equals a half x, we can put plus 1, and there is your slope. So they, it tells us this line is parallel to this line, which means it has the same slope. So already, we know that our new line we're looking for is this, instead of just writing y equals mx plus b, we can write y is equal to a half x plus b. Got it? Okay. Now if it passes through this uh, point, then that means that x is 3 and the y is negative 1. So let's just stick it in there. Negative 1 equals a half times 3. We can just write 3 halves plus b. All right. And let's go ahead and write this as a number with a 2 in the denominator. So that's going to be negative 2 over 2. If you move this over, it turns into negative 2 halves minus 3 halves. That's going to equal b. So b is equal to negative 5 halves. So here's our new equation of the line. y equals a half x minus 5 halves. There you go. Piece of cake. All right. Okay. Let's try uh, a. Go ahead and pause it and try a and then come back and uh, we'll look at it. Okay. A, uh, you know, I... I would look at this and go 4 times the square root of 40, and then I'd go 3 times the square root of 140. I mean, let me just double check on this to make sure I'm in the right spot here. So, Okay, yeah, I'm good. All right, 40, you can break that down into this. 
4, of course, times 4 times the square root. It's 4 times 10. That's 40, right? So the square root of 4 is 2. That's what we end up taking out here and multiplying by. So we have 4 times 2 is 8. And we have a square root of 10 left in there, correct? All right? Minus 3 times the square, you know, 140. Let's just say you don't know where to go with this. Well, then that's okay. No big deal. Just take 140 and then knock it down into factors. I mean, that's a piece of cake. You know, it's going to be 14 times 10. And again, don't forget, no matter what, how you start doing this, it'll be okay. If you put 70 and 2, same thing. doesn't matter. 10 is 2 and 5. Those are both primes. 14 is 2 and 7. Those are both primes. Okay. So what you actually have is, is 3 times I got 2, I got 7, I got 2, and I got 5. Well, 2 times 2, that's going to be the square root of 4, right? So 3 times 2, what we have left in there. All right, so our answer is 8 squared of 10 minus 3 times 2 is 6, and then 7 times 5 is 35. And there's nothing really else you can do with this. That's it. We're done. You can't add those together. That's a square root of 10. That's a square root of 35. They're not like terms. Okay, give B a whirl. Go ahead and pause it and try B. All right, let's take a look at B here. Um, we're just going to distribute the 3 squared of 2. So let's do this one first. 3 times 3 is 9. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which is 2. No need to take an extra time doing that. Gone. And then we have a 3. And then that's, of course, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And then the square root of 2 times the square root of 8 is the square root of 16. Well, the square root of 16 is 4. All right? So now we have this is 18 minus 12, and the answer is 6. That's all you need to do. You can have real number answers as your, you know, integers as your answers. That's totally fine. Okay. All right. Give C a whirl. Give it, give it a shot and then pause it and then come back when you're done. Okay. And again, you, if you, if, whenever it says find an equation on the line, it looks intimidating to you. It won't after a while. Don't even think. Just write Y equals MX plus B. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. So rope it off if you want to. Okay. It's parallel to this line. Let's write this over here. 3y minus x equals 5. Okay, well, let's move the x over. I got 3y is equal to x plus 5. Okay, if you divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3, you're going to get y equals a third x plus 5 thirds. And that is, that's the slope right there. If they tell you the line is parallel to that line, then that means a third is the slope. So we've got half of it. y is equal to 1 third x plus plus something. Well, here is the point that it passes through. Those are both y and x values. So we can just write 3 equals a third times 3 plus b. Well, a third times 3 is 1 plus b. So b is going to equal 3 minus 1. So b is 2. So here's our new equation. y equals 1 third x plus 2. Bingo, bango. There you go. Okay. If you were, it's funny, but if you were actually to graph uh, this, it would actually, you would see this line pass through the point 3, 3 if you did it exactly right. So anyway, okay, that is all we got for today. You guys have a great day. See you next time.